well as rehabilitating water pumps in some of the most remote regions and working with other charities to build schools, training centres, installing solar-powered street lighting and building mosques and Jamaat buildings around the world. Going on now in eastern Burkina Faso and in Niger, where again humanity first, and you do not see this on the, uh, on the CNN, on the BBC, but it is humanity first who are there doing the feeding, doing the help for the people who are starving in those countries, and they have been there for weeks. Roshani ka safar. It has been 125 years. 125 years of witnessing divine miracles and help of God through the prophethood of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam. And then a continuation of that blessing over 100 years through Khilafat. When attempts are made to tarnish the honor of Islam, the Islamic world unfortunately vents their anger through violent protests. Yet Hazrat Khalifatul Masih responds with rational discourse. In 2005, when in Denmark, made a to Denmark mission and I also gave it to the question of the law. I also gave it to the law. I also gave it to the law. So get up and try to get the law और अपने अमलों को हकीकी मुसलमान का अमल बनाओ ना कि सिर्फ मेमोरियल भेजकर या जुलूस निकालकर या चंद दिन शोर मचाकर फिर बैठ जाओ दैट इज आवर स्लोगन लव फॉर ऑल हेटेड फॉर नॉन इट इज सो सिंपल एंड प्योर हाउ कैन वी गो रॉन्ग एज मुस्लिम्स इफ वी आर डेयर टू सच अ सिंपल आइडियोलॉजी एज अ सीख ऑफ गुरु नानक I find this Ahmadiyya motto so close to my heart. Love for all, hatred for none. Love for all, hatred for none. Those words from your third Khalifa are more important, more crucial, more essential today than they have ever been. And of course the Ahmadi have always practiced this peace-loving philosophy. An injunction to love all and to hate none is the avowed guiding principle of the Ahmadi life. Love for all, hatred for none is the message that we see in this mosque and from the Ahmadiyya Association. Your people have been the leaders in taking the peace movements that one step further. His Holiness, Hazret Mirza Masroor Ahmed, the present head of the community, continues in his effort to unite people from all faiths and cultures by promoting interfaith dialogue and religious freedom. He has traveled extensively to spread the message of peace and to remind everyone to respect the rights of other human beings. During these tours, His Holiness has met world leaders from the Far East to Europe, from North America to Africa, discussing the economic, social and political problems facing the world today and how to create peace and justice in the world. He has also met religious and community leaders in order to share common values and core ideals universal to all religions and cultures with a view to improving the moral state of mankind and creating an atmosphere of love and affection. The most anticipated event to be attended by Hazrat Khalifa al Masih was the historic Conference of World Religions, organised by the UK Ahmadiyya Muslim community at Guildhall in London. The event was themed around the existence of God in the 21st century, and it was attended by representatives of major world religions, as well as 500 other guests consisting of politicians, academics and NGOs. Hazur met some of the guests personally in brief meetings, many of whom addressed the congregation on their religious teachings, world peace and the existence of God. I hope and pray that we, who are the representatives of different faiths and religions and who have gathered here today to particularly demonstrate these loving teachings, all strive towards worshipping the one God by treating his creation with justice and by fulfilling their due rights. Certainly, these are the original teachings of all religions. I thought it was fantastic. 
the idea that so many different religions can come together um, under one roof to discuss how we can enhance um, the faith and how we can get people to live together as one, get rid of all the, the, um, the problems in the world. I'd like to start by saying just how important the work of the Amadea community is. It deepens others' understanding of your own faith and it gives a voice to those who are marginalised in their own societies. The Amadea um, community, the mission in Sierra Leone, really they've made a pivotal contribution uh, to the education in our country. You just have to look around wherever you are. And I have to say, Your Holiness, that I was touched by the way in which your predecessor as spiritual leader instructed your community, the Amade community, to befriend and look after those suffering as a result of the Bosnian conflict. And I was very impressed by that. ये चीजें जड़ी हैं इन अनु दूर करन तो आधे ही सानु थोड़ी जी आशा नजर आ रही है कि ये तो आधे वर्गे लोग अगे आके ये जड़ी है दिलादी दूरी हो गई है और उनको टास सकते हैं। But there is something in the faith of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community that is striking, impressing. You teach to your followers that loyalty to your homeland is part of your faith. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community continues to preach a message of peace and tolerance even in parts of the world that persecute them for their beliefs. But this should, ladies and gentlemen, come as a surprise to no one, to anyone who knows this community. Ahmadis are renowned throughout the world for their devotion to peace, universal brotherhood, and the will of God, the core principles of true Islam. For me, as a student of Islam for now almost 30 years, I am constantly amazed by the depth of service that is certainly represented by this community and tradition, by the depth of tolerance and the constant searching for what it means to be human. To be of human means to be of service, and I think this is so dramatically represented by the message of this community. I only wish that more people could be here today to see this face of Islam, to understand this community's expression of that great religion, and I hope that for the future, you will be recognized as the face of Islam, of love, of tolerance, of brotherhood and friendship. The work that you do in the community contributes every day towards that. What would the world have been without Ahmadiyya movement, in as far as Islam is concerned, it would have left a big, big gap, a vacuum incalculable for us to even suggest as to the type of impact it would mean on society. At a time when so many voices despair and blame each other for the upsurge of global violence and discontent, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed is the lone voice bringing God and his message to every corner of the world. Hazrat Khalifa al Masih's message is gaining attention all around the world, as he is the only leader, political or religious, calling for a collective effort towards peace and justice. Hazrat Khalifa al Masih V steps forward at any and every opportunity to engage the public, politicians and media in this extremely worthwhile cause. There have been numerous question and answer sessions as well as press opportunities in the past year where Hazrat Khalifa al Masih has demystified Islam and presented simple and clear solutions to problems faced by nations and individuals. To his countless activities during the year, as we rewind and provide you with just a small glimpse into just some of the activities of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih. The EU Parliament granted a special invitation to His Holiness to discuss the role the Ahmadiyya Muslim community plays across its varying nations and the propagation of peace in today's society. The Pan-African Ahmadiyya Association event celebrating 50 years of independence of many African countries. A large reception was also held in Nagoya attended by more than 150 influential guests some of whom spoke in great praise of the community in their humanitarian services during earthquakes and the recent tsunami, 
even outlining services of Chaudhry Zafullah Khan Saab towards Japan during his days in the United Nations. Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi V, may Allah strengthen his hand, met with leading congressmen and senators and other leaders at Capitol Hill. The meeting, the first of its kind, gave an opportunity to some of the most influential leaders in the United States to hear firsthand Islam's message on world peace. What Congress are able to do is to get a flag that has flown over the Capitol in Washington, D.C., and to give it to a, uh, a man of great holiness who has honored us by his presence. His historic invitation to the sacred meeting place, Taranga Waiwai, by the Maori king. Never before had a religious leader been invited to such a meeting. Masih officially presented the king the Holy Quran with Maori translation. A historical event took place when His Holiness was to visit the National Parliament of Ireland, the Oireachtas, in Dublin. Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi was given a presidential police escort. The speaker welcomed His Holiness to Ireland and spoke of his admiration of the peaceful message and positive contribution of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community to Ireland. His Holiness answered various questions from the parliamentarians through which he was able to explain Islam's true teachings to them. At the Parliament buildings in the capital, Wellington, Hazu delivered his keynote address adding to his continued efforts of reaching out to world leaders, as he has done at the British Houses of Parliament, the US Capitol Hill and the European Parliament. Wherever the movement has been established, it endeavours to exert a constructive influence of Islam through social projects, educational institutes, health services, Islamic publications, and the construction of mosques. These endeavors continue, despite the bitter persecution that the community suffers in some countries. More broadly, I've made the case that no society can truly succeed unless it guarantees the rights of all of its peoples, including religious minorities. Whether they're uh, Ahmadiyya, Muslims in Pakistan, or Baha'i in Iran, or Coptic Christians in Egypt. But going forward, we will keep standing for religious freedom around the world. We continue to stand for the rights of all people to practice their faiths in peace and in freedom. The absence of peace in the world was brutally brought again to the world's attention in the horrific attacks in Lahore of last May. Referring to these tragic events, Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih V consoled the youngsters of the community, reminding them that hardships and sacrifices were incumbent on God's true followers. In May last year, 86 Ahmadi Muslims were martyred while offering their Friday prayers. We bore this tragedy with patience. In Indonesia, our Ahmadis were recently martyred in most barbaric and cruel manner. 